Okay, hi. Uh, for this video, this is the video to show to your ignorant fat friend or relative as a beginner video. And what this is about is we all have friends or relatives who really would benefit benefit from improving their diet, but you can't have a conversation with them because they get too emotional. So this is the video for them. If they'll watch anything, hopefully they'll watch this. If you've got a lot of experience with nutrition and health, this might be a little too easy for you, but um, hopefully this will help someone that you care about. All right, so starting out, humans are herbivores and I've drawn an IQ, a nutrition health IQ curve here of the normal distribution and basically where most people are at is what I would call ignorant herbivores. Humans are herbivores and that's based on our teeth are flat for grinding plant foods. If you take a look at the teeth of a, a horse or any other herbivore, they're flat like ours, okay? And our jaw goes side to side. That's for grinding plant foods. You look at a true carnivore, a cat, they got big piercing fangs, all right? Uh, to rip flesh. In addition, their jaw only can bite in a fixed forward motion to give it a stronger bite so they can kill with one bite versus, you know, herbivores have a softer bite to grind plant food. In addition, a true carnivore has got claws to rip flesh and grab stuff in that sense, real sharp claws, whereas we've got a hand to pick fruit. Okay, I got to get used to seeing where the webcam is. And in addition, if you're walking down a path in a forest or a jungle, you see a dead deer on the on the path with the flies buzzing around it. For us, that's intrinsically disgusting. I mean, do you want to get down on your knees, take a bite out of it, and you know, chew on its guts, chew on its brains, drink its blood? That's disgusting. Okay. On the other hand, if I put out a bowl of fruit, you would salivate. We're made for that. Okay. In addition, we have a long intestinal tract, about 22 feet, for extracting nutrients from plant foods. Versus a carnivore will have a short intestinal tract, about 10 feet, to quickly get it out of their system before it putrefies from all the bacteria and whatnot on it. Okay. So, if you, you know, William C. Roberts, MD, the best cardiac pathologist in the world, had noted that if you take herbivores in lab experiments and you feed them um, high fat diets, like feed them eggs, for example, they all get atherosclerosis, every single one of them, 100%. On the other hand, with a carnivore, no matter how much fat you feed them, you cannot induce atherosclerosis. They're made for that type of diet. Their intestinal tract and their metabolism is designed to handle that, but not with herbivores. So a typical American person eats the SAD diet, the standard American diet, which is high in fat, like 40% to 50% fat, and they all have atherosclerosis. They have tremendous rates of impotence and coronary artery disease. They all have it in varying amounts of severity. 30% of men in their 30s are impotent, 40% in their 40s, 50% in their 50s, 60% in their 60s, 70% in their 70s. That's a lot of impotence, okay? With vegans, their Johnsons are working much better into their 70s and 80s. And the same diet that's causing impotence and coronary artery disease also cause high blood pressure leading to strokes and dementia. They're very often cognitively impaired in their 50s and 60s, super common. Ask any doctor, you talk to cognitively impaired people in their 50s and 60s all day, every day. Typical diabetic, they got all these problems, they're going blind, they're getting their feet chopped off, getting ready to go on dialysis, and you're like, you know, you might wanna change their diet, and they're like, oh, at my age, what are you gonna do? You know, it's like say la vie, watching themselves fade into oblivion, when they could be helped dramatically if they would realize this. Plus, the same populations that get a lot of coronary artery disease and impotence, they also have lots of cancer. Cancer in a meat-eating population is way up here compared to a plant-eating population. It's a lot of unnecessary suffering. Also, it leads to poverty. You go bankrupt, you know. It's very expensive to have open heart surgery, coronary artery stenting, to be on dialysis. It's pretty routine that people are bankrupted by their health problems. You know, one of the best health insurances you could have, one of the best retirement plans you could have is to stay healthy. Um, now, if you look at the, what I would call the half screwed, and these tend to be people with a higher health nutrition IQ, um, the lacto ovo pesco vegetarians, they get the same diseases as a sad diet population. It just takes, you know, about an extra 10 years later. So you want to have your first myocardial infarction in your 50s or in your 60s, okay? But they still get sick and have the same diseases, same problems, lots of obesity, diabetes, and whatnot. The, what I will call here health aristocrat, aristocrats, the top 1% of nutrition and health IQs, they become vegans, okay? 100% low fat, low sodium, whole food vegans, all right? That's the healthiest diet in the world. We're going to go into some more detail about why that is. And the more you move in that direction, the less money you'll spend on healthcare problems. Okay, so what are some of the benefits of eating this low sodium, low fat, whole food, vegan diet. When I say whole food, I mean, you know, you buy beans, you buy 
um, blueberries, carrots, lettuce, one thing. There's no ingredient list, okay? These are just real whole foods. We talked about this, and we'll go into a little more detail here. Obesity and high-fat diets associated with diabetes. It's the fat itself. It's a dietary fat. Diabetes is a lipid disease. It's not a carbohydrate disease. That's an important thing to understand. It's a high dietary fat that induces insulin resistance and leads to diabetes. And then the diabetes causes damage to the nerves, neuropathy, to the eyes, retinopathy, to the kidneys, nephropathy to the blood vessels throughout the body, vasculopathy. That's why diabetics are constantly getting their feet uh, amputated because they have no blood flow down to their feet. They're going blind. They're uh, losing their kidneys. Um, it's very sad. Diabetics suffer terrible things. It's like torture, you know, and type 2 diabetes, just don't eat fat, okay? Reduce your dietary fat intake, okay? You don't have to be a genius to do that. And then you'd ask yourself, well, how do you know that I'm telling you the correct information? Because you've heard a lot of things, you know, there's all kinds of, for everybody telling about the vegan diet on the internet, there's a thousand more, 10,000, a million more views of people talking about nonsense like the paleo diet, for example. That's a high fat diet. It's going to lead to increased insulin resistance and it's going to increase the risk of having all these problems. So anyways, how can you know that what I'm telling you is correct? It's easy. Just look at the epidemiology. Look around the world. Look at the populations, for example, that ate the traditional rice diets. When the Asian populations ate 80 to 90 percent of the calories of rice, they almost never had any obesity, any diabetes. Okay, look at other populations still eating old-fashioned plant-based diets. They don't have any obesity next to zero on hypertension, next to zero on coronary arteries. Whereas in a westernized country eating a high-fat diet, it's considered normal to be fat, diabetic, hypertensive with coronary artery disease and impotent. That's considered normal. Okay, it's not. All right, and I've, I've mentioned it before. If you go to Okinawa, back when they still used to eat a lot of sweet potatoes and plant-based foods and had a 95% or more plant-based diet, they had people in Okinawa, centenarians, 105 years old, American doctors, the two Wilcox brothers, one's a PhD, one's an MD. They went over there with the Japanese physicians to study these centenarians. And a lot of them, they couldn't find any health problems, none. Over 100 years of age, no diabetes, no high blood pressure. Um, all right, so we talked about atherosclerosis. It's just everybody gets atherosclerosis that eats a high-fat diet by the time they're 50, and much sooner than that for very many of them. Um, the same population with a lot of impotence and a lot of coronary artery disease also have a lot of myocardial infarction, a lot of stroke, um, and a lot of cancer. And this was well-known as you know, the 70, 1970s or earlier by Nathan Pritigan, for example, had figured out all this stuff. They also get a lot more arthritis. Um, the fat in the blood decreases oxygen to the tissues, and Pritikin felt that that was the main cause of arthritis, and he might be right about that. They also get increased gout, but gout's a relatively rare type of arthritis. DJD, degenerative joint disease, also called osteoarthritis, is by far the most common type of arthritis. And by the way, you can ask any doctor. They see it all day long every day. When in doubt, arthritis, it's DJD. Uh, at least 90% of the arthritis I see is DJD. It's probably 95%. Okay, back pain. Everybody knows the heart is affected by lack of blood flow and the brain's affected by lack of blood flow. Well, guess what? The entire body is. That's the main common, most common cause of back pain. I wrote a book about that, okay? Ischemic spine is the most common cause of back pain. It also go, messes up the eyes. When you, when you block the little tiny blood vessels in the back of the eye to the retina, the person goes blind, okay? And that happens progressively. All the common diseases of blindness in old age, they're all vascular, cataracts, diabetes, age-related macular degeneration, hypertension, glaucoma, infarct. Because I know a lot of people say, oh, I would rather die than not eat meat. Well, that's exactly what will happen. People who eat meat after 50, it means you're going to most likely die prematurely. It also means you're going to suffer a lot. You're going to spend a lot of money on health care costs. You're going to have to take lots of medications. And you're probably going to have to go for surgery. Okay, eating animals after 50 usually correlates to surgery. Think I'm kidding? Myocardial uh, disease is going to lead to coronary artery bypass graft quite often or coronary artery stents. It leads to hernias, it leads to cancer surgeries, it leads to cataract surgeries. Uh, meat eaters after 50 get tons of surgery. Surgery is no fun. You want, you know, if you if you don't go down that path, you've got a good chance you'll never need to have surgery in your life. Okay, I never had any surgery. I don't see any reason why I'll ever need any surgery. Uh, they also go deaf, hearing loss, which is bad. You get socially isolated when you can't hear. It's hard for somebody to talk to you. Dementia, uh, super common in meat eaters. Um, and, and when I say meat eaters, I also mean quite often they put oil in their food or they eat processed food. Processed food's got sodium off the charts. It's 
worsens hypertension and other problems. Abdominal pressure syndrome, we talked about that before, the lack of dietary fiber. It's the most common nutrient deficiency in this country is a lack of dietary fiber. Constipation, straining at the stool, increases intra-abdominal pressure, leading to hiatal hernia, stomach pops in the chest, gastroesophageal reflux, felt this so-called heartburn. Um, they have increased risk of esophageal cancer. Straining at the stool with constipation puts pressure on the veins. They dilate. Those are hemorrhoids. The back pressure on the colon causes diverticulitis, outpouching in the walls of muscle of the large bowel of the colon. Sometimes those will pop and leak stool into the abdomen, diverticulitis that's called. Every single day in any major hospital, they'll admit at least one patient for diverticulitis. Okay, I've seen hundreds of them. It's super common. Appendicitis, way more common in meat eaters because the lack of fiber. Fiber pulls water into the stool. When there's no fiber, the stool gets dried out and you can form a rock-like obstruction of the appendix. The appendix hangs down like a finger. See, I can get a finger hanging down here. And when you form a stool ball in the proximal part of it, beneath it, the glands to create mucus, and the mucus can't get into the rest of the colon, the cecum there, so the, the appendix will pop. That's what appendicitis is. Um, they have much more gallstones because they're hypersaturated with cholesterol. The back pressure from constipation. So constipation back pressure tightens up your abdominal pressure. That's called the Valsalva maneuver. And that pressure down in the legs causes varicose veins. It dilates the veins in the scrotum. It's called a varicocele. All kinds of bad things you don't want. Um, leaky gut. The lack of fiber means that you can't feed the good gut bacteria in the colon, so you're predisposed to getting leaky gut with all the autoimmune diseases. That also includes inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome, um, and a whole bunch of pretty severe diseases, including multiple sclerosis, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, etc. Um, estrogen overload syndrome. The high meat diet leads to increased estrogens in your body, okay? Heavy meat eaters and processed food eaters have higher estrogen levels. First of all, they're fat. The fat tissue converts uh, some of the testosterone into estrogen. Secondarily, there's often estrogens given to the animals to help them grow faster. Number three, um, the meat changes the gut flora in the colon such that, and the small bowel, such that it'll have more of an enzyme called glucuronidase. Glucuronidase enzyme deconjugates the estrogen that had been excreted by the liver into the bile. And once it's deconjugated, it's reabsorbed in the body. So they have significantly higher estrogen levels, meaning that they're predisposed, if it's a woman, to PMS, to heavy periods, menorrhagia, endometriosis, polycystic ovary syndrome, infertility, postmenopausal hot flashes, breast cancer, endometrial cancer, and men, excuse me, increased prostate cancer. And meat eaters, processed food eaters have increased pancreas cancer, increased colon cancer, cancer increased in general. Okay, um, there's also, if you're eating processed food, there's tons of toxins in processed food, those long ingredients lists, and there's even hidden ingredients that they don't even tell you about. You don't want to eat any of that stuff. I, don't, I eat zero of that stuff. So these are all the things that are making people sick, okay? Because I know the average person doesn't believe that diet is what makes people sick. Well, then ask yourself, how come people eating the standard American diet, they're fat and sick, you know, routinely, most of them, versus same-age persons in another country where they're eating a plant diet, they don't have any problems. And you say, well, they're genetically different. No, there's lots of migration studies. When, for example, people come from Japan and they're healthy, eating the old traditional diets with their primarily rice-based diet. They move to Hawaii, start being a little partially westernized, they get fatter and sicker. By the time they move to California, they're fatter and sicker by far. And it's the same when they come from any other place, um, that the more westernized their diet, meaning the more they move away from plants and eat processed food and oils and all these junk foods, the fatter and sicker they get with all of these diseases. All these diseases go together. Obesity, diabetes, hypertension, dementia, cancer. They're all, in my opinion, kind of different variations on the same thing. Okay, and they're avoidable. You don't have to get these diseases. And even if you already have them, they might be, you can certainly slow them down. You might be able to reverse them even. You know, coronary artery disease, type 2 diabetes can often be reversed in their early phases. Okay. So I just want to share this with you because... You know, a lot of people that are fat and sick, they just said, well, this is my fate. I've tried a bunch of different diets. It's hopeless. Nothing works. You know, everybody knows exercise more, eat less. And um, that doesn't work. You have to change what you eat. That's what actually works. And when you learn about nutrition, just imitate the people that are skinny and energetic from other countries. And they eat a plant-based diet. Um, and you got a good chance to dramatically improve your health. And everything goes together because you're now putting the food into your body that you're designed for 
You'll tend to be skinnier. You'll tend to have higher energy levels. There's a famous um, bariatric surgeon named Garth Davis. He was a fat seller himself, became a vegan. He had so much energy, he started running triathlons. That's actually a characteristic story. Uh, vitality. You're going to get butter blood flow to all your tissues, including your skin. So your skin will have more of a youthful glow of vitality. You'll look younger and healthier. That's pretty typical that that happens. Okay. Um, you'll be skinnier, a healthier uh, body weight. Um, your immune system functions better when you're eating a plant-based diet. Uh, plant-based eaters have lower white blood cell counts. It's an indicator that the immune system is not having to deal with so much inflammation all over the place. There's multiple reasons why meat increases systemic inflammation. Besides leaky gut, they also have increased risk of xenocyelitis, and they also have increased risk of arthritis and joint problems, and that goes also with the Rouleau formation from the high-fat diet, etc. Vegans tend to have better moods. On multiple survey studies, they'll, 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 they'll suggest that they are have better moods, less depression. They're psychologically happier. Um, there's reasons for that, too, when you start getting into the issues with uh, hippocampal like cytotoxicity and whatnot. We got separate lectures on that. Um, they live longer. You know, the Seventh Day Adventist uh, vegans, they live an extra about 10 years compared to other Californians, and they live healthier than the other ones do. Um, and the more close they are to the low sodium, low fat vegan, the healthier and longer lived they are. And you save lots of money. You know, you don't have to be taking all these pills and getting all these surgeries and going bankrupt probably, you're much less likely to get cancer or need any type of open heart surgery or anything. So you save lots of money. You're much less likely to be dementia and then have to have, you know, a nursing home and all the expense that goes with that. So anyways, I can tell you this. I hope this helps you. Um, spend a week or two learning about plant foods. Pick a starch that can satisfy your hunger. Starches are things like potatoes, sweet potatoes, rice, beans, quinoa, oatmeal, carrots. Um, those things will satisfy your hunger because you have to satisfy your hunger. Otherwise, you go back to eating the other things you used to eat previously. And then you add to that some fruits and vegetables. Drink just water um, and play around with what will you know, work for you. Eventually, get the old junk food and meat out of the house and the oils um, and start learning about it. And you'll see that persons who go down this path, they do a lot better. So, I hope this is helpful to you, and this is just an introductory beginner video. There's a lot more to learn, but it's all going to come down to that, you know, eating more plant foods. Okay, anyways, I hope this is helpful.